Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using moment distribution method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. Also, there is a beam BC. In the columns, there are no loads. In the beam BC, there is uniformly distributed load 9 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The height of the columns is 4 meter. Length of the beam is also 4 meter. This frame is a non sway type frame because we have symmetrical loading and symmetrical dimensions. Now let us find the fixed end moments. In the columns AB and CD, there are no loads. So the fixed end moments M of AB, M of BA, M of CD and M of DC are 0. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the beam BC. In the beam BC, there is UDL. 9 kN per meter, it is acting for the full span. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 9, L is 4. When we apply the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. In the moment distribution method, we have to find the distribution factor. To find the distribution factor, we have to calculate the stiffness. Let us see the formulas to find the stiffness. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. If the fair end is hinged or with roller support, the formula is 3EA upon L. If the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4EA upon L. First, in the joint B, let us find the stiffness for BA. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point A. In the point A, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of BA is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of BA, we are getting EI. Now, let us find the stiffness for BC. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point C. The point C is continuous. If the fair end is continuous, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. For the stiffness of BC, we are getting EI. Now, let us find the stiffness values in the joint C. First, let us find for CB. For that, from the joint C, we have to look at the point B. The point B is continuous. If the fair end is continuous, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of CB is 4. Let us apply that. For the stiffness of CB, we are getting EI. Now, let us find the stiffness for CD. For that, from the joint C, we have to look at the point D. In the point D, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of CD, we are getting EI. Now, let us find sigma K. In the joint B, we have found two stiffness values. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting 2EI. In the joint C also, we have calculated two stiffness values. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting 2EI. Now, let us find the distribution factor. The formula is K upon sigma K. We have calculated the values of K and sigma K. Using the formula, we can find the distribution factors. 
Now let us start making the moment distribution table. In the table, first let us enter all of the members. Then let us enter the distribution factor values. Then let us enter the fixed end moments. Now let us make the first distribution in the joint B. First let us make for BA. For that we have to add these two fixed end moments and then multiply with the distribution factor at BA. When we do that we are getting a negative value. So we are entering inside the table as positive. Now let us do the distribution for BC. For that we have to add these two values and then multiply with the distribution factor at BC. When we do that we are getting a negative value. So we are entering inside the table as positive. Now let us do the distribution in the joint C. First let us do for CB. For that we have to add these two fixed end moments and then multiply with the distribution factor at CB. When we do that we are getting a positive value. So we are entering inside the table as negative. Now let us do the distribution for CD. For that we have to add these two values and then multiply with the distribution factor at CD. When we do that we are getting a positive value. So we are entering inside the table as negative. In the joint B for BA and for BC we have same distribution factor values. So in the distribution we will get the same values. In the joint C also for CB and CD we have same distribution factors. So in the distribution we will get the same values. Now let us make the carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. Now let us do the second distribution. Now under the joint B there is only one value. For BA there is no value and for BC there is a value. So we can make the distribution very easily. For BA and BC the distribution factor is 0 0.5. When we multiply minus 3 with 0 0.5 we will get minus 1.5. Since we have got a negative value, we have to enter inside the table as positive. Now let us do the second distribution in the joint C. In the joint C also there is only one value. For CB we have 3 and for CD there is no value. So we can make the distribution very easily. When we multiply 3, with the distribution factor 0.5 we will get 1.5 since we have got a positive value we have to enter inside the table as negative now let us do carry over for that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers now let us do the third distribution First let us do in the joint B. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factor 0 0.5. When we do that we are getting a negative value. So we are entering inside the table as positive. Now let us do the distribution in the joint C. For that we have to multiply this value with the distribution factor 0 0.5. When we do that we are getting a positive value. So we have to enter inside the table as negative. Now let us do the carry over. For that we have to divide these values by 2 and enter the answers. In the similar way we can do more distributions and carry overs until we are getting very smaller values. I have done up to the 6th distribution. I have stopped in the 6th distribution because I am getting very smaller values. In the last distribution we have to give carryover only to the fixed ends.
Now let us add the values and find the final moments. After adding, we are getting the final moments. For MAB, we have got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MBA also, we have got a positive value. That means it is also acting in the clockwise direction. For MBC, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MCB, we have got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MCD, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Finally, for MDC, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Now let us find the reactions. First let us find them in the column AB. When we take moment about the B, we will get HA. By applying this rule, we will get HB. Now let us find the reactions in the beam BC. Since it is having the symmetrical loading, we can easily find VB and VC. For that, we have to multiply the UDL with the distance and then divide by 2. When we do that, we are getting VB and VC. Now, let us find the reactions in the column CD. When we take moment about D, we will get HC. By applying this rule, we will get HD. Using the loads and reactions, we can draw the shear force diagram. Using this formula, we can draw the free movement diagram. Using the direction of the movements, we can draw the end movement diagram. Then we can combine both of them so that we will get the bending movement diagram.